a while back, Brian covered some fountain pen myths. Focus more on a beginner's perspective. Misconceptions about fountain pens can happen at any experience level though. So with the help of our customer care team, I've collected five fairly common misconceptions from fountain pen users that we've encountered over the years. And I'm going to do my best to provide some clarity. Misconception number one, a new fountain pen doesn't have to be cleaned. The fact is before your new pen makes it to your hands, you don't know the details of its journey. Most pens are made with some mass manufactured pieces. More often than not, that includes the feed, which is often overlooked as being less crucial than the nib. A bit of oil or sediment left over from the manufacturing process can cause some confusing writing inconsistencies that you can eliminate by giving your pen an introductory cleaning. You might also receive a pen that has been tested with ink at the manufacturer and obviously that can cause some surprises as well. Cleaning your pen is like restarting your electronic device. Always the first shot at fixing a glitch and it gives you a fresh start. Most of the time, a brand new pen doesn't have to be cleaned. However, it's good practice and it only helps. Misconception number two, an expensive pen will write better than a cheap pen. This is a turbulent topic, but here's the fact. As pens increase in price, all those extra dollars aren't added just because there's more work being done to improve the nib and its performance on paper. Usually what's more evidently contributing to the price uh, is related to materials and production. The more expensive materials, smaller batches being made and more handwork or less automation. Things like that are most often going to have a greater impact on cost. You could probably find a point in the fountain pen market where your ROI on nib performance sort of stalls out and obviously how different brands choose to develop their more expensive pens will vary, but you should not expect a pen that's $100 to write twice as good as a pen that's $50. Twice the dollar doesn't always mean twice the performance. Misconception number three, nib sizes are universal. I so wish that this were true. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if you had a Lamy steel extra fine nib and you knew that you'd get the same line width if you bought a Pilot extra fine? Heck, I'd, I'd be happy to even have the same line width consistency within one brand. Not only can one brand's nib be vastly different than another brand's version of the same size, but you'll see that happening within the same brand. Like take Pilot, for example, arguably the most consistent manufacturer in the industry. And even they have a bunch of different interpretations of what a broad line looks like. And yes, even nibs that allude to a specific measurement like 1.1 and 1.5, there's no universally agreed upon standards for that across brands. So my advice is to check out our Nib Nook comparison tool. Over many years, Brian Goulet himself has written with just about every different nib we've ever had so that you can see how they compare. Misconception number four, fountain pen nibs should always be smooth. One of the most appealing things about writing with a fountain pen is how it effortlessly glides across the page, especially when compared to the hard press and drag of a ballpoint. While many pen companies strive to produce a silky smooth stroke, Smoothness is not always the goal. In fact, the more a nib gets polished in pursuit of ultra smoothness, the closer the risk of over polishing. Over polished nib tipping leads to hard starts, skipping, sadness, and despair. So some brands don't make smoothness the goal. Not ultra smoothness anyway. Instead, it's just performance and consistency. A brand like Sailor, for example, produces nibs with a hint of feedback, not unlike the lead of a pencil. Can you have both smoothness and consistency? Yeah, absolutely. But just because you have a nib that you can feel doesn't mean there's something wrong with it. Furthermore, we like to differentiate scratchy and feedback here by saying scratchy is when a nib actually like gouges into the paper like a fingernail and it's pulling up paper fibers. Feedback on the other hand, is just a feeling of texture on the page. Misconception number five, writing issues are a result of the pen. Being totally honest, fountain pens do indeed have a bunch of things that can mess up their performance. The nib, the feed, the filling mechanism, lots of variables at work here, which makes sense when we immediately identify a problem while we're writing and we begin to wonder what's wrong with my pen. Sure, it very well may be an issue with the pen, but the ink and the paper often get overlooked when troubleshooting. You can spend all the time in the world trying to troubleshoot your pen, but if you're trying to write on dollar store wrapping paper, it's not gonna matter much. <laughs> Obviously, that's an exaggeration, I think, but 
time has most definitely been wasted by not fully considering your paper and your ink as equal parts of the trifecta of writing performance. Oftentimes, there's no real problem at all. It's merely a disagreement between two of the three factors. Your extra fine nib is going to feel extra toothy if you're using textured stationery. Fast drying ink on super absorbent paper is likely going to produce some gnarly feathering. A super shimmery ink might clog up your pen's feed. Nothing's broken here. Sometimes you just put together a team that doesn't work well together, and that's okay. Just swap one out until you find a team that works for you. Uh, ink samples can really help here. Those are the five that we were able to come up with. If there are any misconceptions that you had when you first started out that you think other people might be running into, please share them in the comments. Maybe we'll add it to a sequel. Until then, have fun right on. Thank you.